This week, we're moving from the abstract to the physical. This week, we will be looking at 2D shapes, so like the surface of this table, as well as 3D shapes like this box. We will start with the basics such as area, volume, surface area, and length, as well as how to apply these to some complex SAT problems. If you're like me, you hate having to memorize things in math, especially complicated formulas. Luckily, at the beginning of every math section on the SAT are almost all the formulas you're going to need for the test that we see here. So if you forget any, just flip back and look there. The important part is to know how to apply them. So let's start with an example. A baseball stadium has a circular shaped field with diameter 350 feet. To allow the stadium to play football, they need to extend the field into a rectangle with dimensions 350 feet by 500 feet, building on top of the old field. About how much turf do they need to buy to cover the new parts of the field in square feet, rounded to the nearest square foot? We can already see that this is not so straightforward as just plugging into one of the formulas. We need to break it down step by step. We should always start by drawing a diagram. So to start, we have the old baseball field here, 350 feet in diameter circle. Next, we want to add on top of it the football field, 350 feet by 500 feet. So we draw it on top, just like we see here. Now, what are we actually looking for? We're looking for the new area to extend the field. Another hint there is the mention of square feet in the question, which is a unit of area. And what area are we looking for specifically? Let's draw it into our diagram. It's all of the new turf, like we see here. Okay, great. Now we can see what we're looking for, which is an important first step, but how do we actually find it? So we need to be a little bit clever and see that the desired area here is the area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle. So now we can plug in numbers into our little fun shape equation here and get to our answer. So first, the area of the rectangle. The area of any rectangle is length times width. So we plug in numbers and get 500 times 300. Next, the area of the circle, pi r squared. But what is the radius? Well, we're given the diameter is 350, so the radius is half that, 350 over 2. Now, simply evaluating numbers, we get to our final answer, an area of 78,789. What are the takeaways here? Well, as you can see, area and volume problems on the SAT are rarely as simple as just plugging into formulas. So you should always, always start by drawing a diagram. Sometimes one will be given to you, but you should always make your own if not. Otherwise, you're going to lose things in your head. So next up, we will see a three-dimensional problem, which is also a scaling problem, one you should expect to see on the test. This question asks us, if we increase the radius of a sphere by a factor of k, by what factor does the new volume increase? So whenever you see a scaling problem like this, you want to start by writing out exactly what quantity you are analyzing. In this case, volume. So we write out the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Remember, if you forget that, just look to the start of the test. And next, what we're really looking for from this is the ratio of the increased volume over the original volume. So we can evaluate both of those, divide them out, and get our answer. Here we see our scale factor we're looking for, the increased volume over the original volume. So finding both of these separately, first the increased volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but our r becomes r times k, because we have scaled the radius by k. So evaluating that, we see that our final increased volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed times k cubed. Now, likewise, we evaluate the original volume, which is just 4 thirds pi r cubed, but no k, because we have not scaled it. This is the original volume, original radius. So that's just 4 thirds pi r cubed. And now we can get our scale factor by dividing both of these volumes to get, after doing a lot of cancellation, just k cubed, which is our final answer. Next, onto a slightly harder 3D problem. A sphere with volume v is inscribed within a cube such that it touches each of these six inner faces. What is the volume of the cube in terms of v, the volume of the sphere? Here we have an inscribed solid a common and very challenging problem type on the SAT math section. As always, we want to start by drawing a diagram. Now in three dimensions, this can be quite challenging, but just get some practice and do your best. Here we have a very rough sketch of our diagram. Now, what are we looking for? Again, we're looking for the volume of the cube. Now the volume of a cube can be found by S cubed, where S is the side length, but we don't know the side length yet. All we're given is the volume of the sphere. So let's try to relate the volume of the cube somehow with the volume of the sphere. So one thing that we can determine based on our diagram is that the radius of the sphere is actually the side length divided by two. Just looking at our diagram, we see that the radius is half of that side length. So we can use the radius then 
uh, to relate to the volume that we know, the volume of the sphere. Plugging into the volume formula for a sphere, we have v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, and we can substitute r for s, which will eventually allow us to relate what we need to find, which is volume of the cube, with what we know, which is the volume of the sphere. And we do that through the radius and side length. Okay, so plugging in, we get eventually that the volume of the sphere is equal to pi over 6 s cubed. Now again, we're relating the volume of the sphere with the side length, and we can then find s equals this function of v, which we can plug in to our formula for the volume of the cube, and after evaluating, we get that the volume we want, the volume of the cube, is equal to 6v over pi. And it's a really nasty problem, but you have to take it step by step, follow your diagram, and find ways to go from what you do know, what you're given, to what you eventually need to find. Okay, now on to our last problem, where we'll learn a bit about surface area and length. This question reads, a cube's faces each have surface area 25 square inches. What is the shortest distance between the center of the cube and its faces? So first off, some vocabulary. What is a face? A face is the two-dimensional surface on a three-dimensional object. So in this case, for a cube, a three-dimensional object, the faces are squares. Think of game dice, for example. All right, now let's on to how do we solve this problem. This is one of those problems that on a first read sounds completely whack. How the heck do we relate the surface area to the distance from the center to its faces? Well, when you get stuck on a problem like this, just start by writing down what you do know and solving for whatever you can, even if it seems unrelated to the solution. In this case, a good place to start is the side length, and we will end up seeing that we can use this to relate the surface area to the distance we want. Let's find the side length using the only thing we know, that the surface area is 25 square inches. Now, what is surface area? For vocab, surface area is the two-dimensional area of a face of a 3D shape. In this example, our 3D shape is a cube, so each face is a square. So what is the area of a square? Well, we can find that by just s squared, s being the side length. So we have this equation based on that, s squared equals 25, and that gives us that the side length for our cube is equal to 5. Now, how can we actually use this and connect to what we're asked for? Well, we're asked for the distance between the center and the faces of this cube. Looking at our diagram here, we can actually see that that is equal to the side length over 2. Having found the side length, we can then plug in and find that the total distance for our final answer is just 5 over 2. And with that, we're done with properties of two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. The most important lesson here is to always draw your diagrams. After you've drawn your diagrams, fill in whatever it is you know based on what you're given. Even if it doesn't seem connected to a final answer, the more you know about your diagram, the more you'll know about your final answer. And as for formulas, don't need to memorize anything, just look to the start of the section of the test and you will have all your formulas given to you. So I'll see you next week as we'll cover more geometry. Hope you liked the video. If you want to hear more and see what else we're up to, hit like and subscribe and see a new video coming out from Point Avenue every week. If you want to talk to us, hear more about what we're doing, or have any questions, email us at contact at pointavenue.com. Bye!